This video starts by exploring a market in Kinshasa and ends with... <sighs> There's a pangolin in my hotel shower. If you've been following the Congo series here on Fearless and Far, maybe it's not a big surprise that another adventure went completely sideways. After all, we did get labeled as spies, had to flee into the jungle, traded a crocodile for a bed, and ate venomous snakes with pygmies. If you're new here, you've got a bit to catch up on. But how the hell did I end up with an endangered animal in my shower? Well, it's a long story. And it all starts with a market, where I get gifted some magic pills to grow my breasts. We goof around a little, and we cause a bit of trouble. Welcome to the crazy markets of Kinshasa here in DRC, Congo. A market is the best way to see how a city works, and here, no doubt, it's going to be crazy, so please, don't get mad. Keep an open mind and let's explore the market. We've been given special permission and I don't think this market's ever been filmed before, so no doubt it's going to be wild. With that in mind, let's go. We've reached the wet market part of the Liberty Market and it's a zoo. Wow. These monsters are all from the Congo River, the lifeblood of this country. Watch out. Whoops, almost stepped on a crocodile. The the animals here are cooked inside here, yeah? yeah? They are curry actually. This is They're curry. Yes, curry, yeah. So this is what? This is like this fish or can be fish, can be crocodile, can be tortoise, can be whatever. Okay. Curry. And this is a traditional a traditional way of eating, yeah? Yes. Alright. Okay, there we go. There's the example. He says this is bio, this is very nice because when you cook them this way, it's very nice and very clean, very tasty. Ah, yeah. all right. This is the fish, yeah? Yeah, the fish. Hey, hey fish. it looks like <laughs> Okay. Then I get the impression I'm doing something wrong. I was being too dainty eating my fish. And this is them mocking me. Okay, so I guess you just eat the bones. Or do you swallow? You swallow the bones too? Tongue is very skilled to choose to make to separate the bones and the, 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 the body. Yeah. It's really spicy and really, really good. You take, yeah, there are some bones. Eh? There's lots of bones, but it's some of the most delicate, tasty. Spicy fish I've had in my entire life. Watch it, yeah. Regardez, on fait ça avec ça. On brosse les dents. They brosse les dents. Like a like a local toothbrush. Yeah, local. I mean, yeah, traditional toothbrush. Yeah. Ça range les dents, ça nous donne vraiment. Alors comme ça. Voilà. Quand tu fais ça, ah, ça va couler aussi la langue. Ah. Au moment où tu fais ça, uh -huh. ça va couler la langue. Okay, okay. It's more complicated than a toothbrush. I'm learning. And I think I've got a splinter. Uh, sorry, excuse me. I gotta say, that was wild, literally and figuratively. I've got Saddam with me who is helping control a little bit of the chaos. All right. I guess that was fish, and now we have meat. Holy shit. This is a rat, kind of Gambian rat. This is bush meat? No, this is bush meat. This is bush meat market. So you will see, this is an antelope. It's a kind of bush, bush pack, I think. 
I get yelled at immediately for having a camera. Thankfully, there was no pangolin for sale. Well, at least not here. We continue to a different part of the meat section where they will allow my camera. We meet Katrin, who sells snakes and porcupines, which apparently go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's a serpent for to eat, right? Yes. To eat, to eat. But how do I prepare it? How do I prepare it? It's a little bit of a moussaka. It looks a little tough, actually. And it's all black from being smoked. What's the best nourriture? The serpent or the porcupine? The porcupine, the serpent, it's good. It's not to eat the other ones. No, it's not to eat the other ones. It's not to eat the other ones. Like necklaces, necklaces. Bye bye. Thank you very Just right here, Mopani worms, which I've seen in East Africa before. They're like a caterpillar. Here they're called mbinzo. And they are fresh. They are very fresh. They are still wriggling all over the plate. Les chenilles, oui. Ils sont très gros. Très gros et très frais. She shows me how fresh they are. Okay, I get, oh, okay. Salité, c'est la salité. Yep, that's fresh. We saw these in our last video, when the pygmy hunters pulled them out of a tree. They are a really common food here. They were served at our hotel buffet. And behind door number one, we have mbinzo. Okay, that's... that's... When you bite them, you can hear the heads go crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, in English, it is difficult. Just... For me, for me, English is not difficult. Eng English is easy. The Francais is difficult. No, the Francais is not difficult. It's very easy. It's very difficult. The English is very difficult. It's like drinking water. That's what she says. The Lingala is difficult. The Lingala is also very easy. You know that everyone who comes here, we always speak about the Lingala. Tell me a word very important in Lingala. What's the word? Bonjour. 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 Mbote. 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 Au revoir, what's it? Bye. Bye. On the streets here, all across the city, you see baguettes. Yeah, like the French baguette. We'll buy one. C'est combien? Les baguettes ici sont 300. Alors, deux. Oh, prawn. Okay, okay. <laughs> merci, merci, merci. Okay. Amazing. Thanks. Okay. And you might wonder why there's French bread and why we're speaking French. Well, we're speaking French and Lingala. Woo! Ling Lingala is kind of a mix of an African language and French. But if you haven't traveled very much, it might be a bit confusing. And I don't blame you because we learned that, you know, they speak Spanish in Mexico and I guess French here in DRC. But there's some icky roots there. And so, Obed, why is there French spoken and why are we buying baguettes of French bread here in, of all places, the DRC? Yeah, what I would like people to understand is that uh, we have a lot of heritage from the colonialists. The colonialist So times. this is a tangible uh, proof that we have been colonized by a French country. Mm -hmm. Which was Belgium, right? Belgium, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and yes, the first school, the very first school, very first churches were actually in, in French. Uh -huh. And that's why the new generation is more friendly to French. And that type of bread, of course, we have them here because it's something important from the colonial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll continue the tour for now, but that's a very important point that we can't forget. Then a war of words broke out. <laughs> things, things very quickly erupt into chaos here. But let me, and I've got damage control happening behind the scenes. But listen, people might seem unfriendly. They are not unfriendly. They are incredibly friendly. But the camera makes things very complicated. 
Generally, when a white boy like myself walks around with the camera or really does anything here, even being here, people are sometimes suspicious about what I'm up to. Why were they suspicious? Well, this country's been raped for a lot of its natural resources and a lot of other things, its people, for a very, very long time. It hasn't exactly stopped, but it started with colonization. This guy in particular, fuck this guy. King Leopold II from Belgium. He became famous again recently during the BLM protests when statues of slave traders were torn down and thrown into the canals of Europe. In around 1910, this man killed 10 million people in the DRC and cut the hands off 5 million more, all in the name of rubber. That amount of brutality and exploitation has left scars on this place that still echo today. In many of these countries, when they see someone with a camera, they get suspicious of what they're doing. And that's because so many have been taken advantage of in the past. So, with that in mind, generally all they're looking for is just to buy the fish that you're filming or the snake or whatever it is. I don't know what I'd do with a snake. I travel so much, but we buy it, it stays here, they can sell it again, and there's smiles on everyone's faces. Quite often it's just a few dollars, but if you're walking up to someone with a camera with no money, just grabbing photos, that does not fly here. And the first impression is the people are very mean. They're not. They're just suspicious and they have very good reason to be. Yeah, let's continue. We've returned to the area that sells bokoko, like voodoo, but the local version. The black magic, the trinkets, the fetishes, these things, the traditional medicine is sold here. The thing here is it's a fetish or different? Yes, it's a fetish. To do what? To do the gardening of the house, even the fields, the fields, the fields, the fields, the And beside the fetishes, we have some more modern medicines. Magic breast, beard growth for babies, maxi gras, Viagra to the max, and the bazooka system, which apparently works so well, I had to censor it. For the guys, for things like that. Like that, yeah. Yes, it works. Really hard. Yeah, good review, man. Good review, man. Good review, man. Good review, man. It's good. The roche? The sun. C'est pour la sang. Quand tu, 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 tu travailles d'abord ici, uh -huh. tu, tu mélanges avec ça, tu fais ça en fait, hein? Ça va aller. Ensemble. Oui, ensemble. Uh -huh. hein? Ça va aller. Tu bois un peu. Hein? Uh -huh. Tu bois un peu. Un peu, soir, un peu, matin. We ask, what does it help with? Here's something I've learned. If you find something strange in a market, nine times out of ten, it's an aphrodisiac. Très très bien. Is this a gift? C'est quoi ça? For to make your app, le grand monde des fesses et les mamelles. Ça c'est les médicaments. Both. Well, there you go. I don't know if I want that, but it's a gift. Here's the point where we leave Kinshasa and fly to Buende and had some misadventures, to say the least. You know the story already. But here's where we continue it. We drive for another full day on motorbikes to the city of Bandaka, a major stop along the Congo River. 550 kilometers by motorbike. <laughs> and Bandaka is a pretty wild place. Here we visit another market, and there we found something I didn't expect. It was a live pangolin. This was not the first time we'd seen one on this trip. One was brought to us while sleeping with the pygmies, and another was seen by Obed, my guide, being sold on the side of the road. I couldn't handle seeing this incredible creature suffer in a bag and die at a market. So we decided to try and save it. Operation Pangolin Jailbreak has commenced. We've got the package nestled between us right now. We're going back to the hotel. But Obedi, is it common to see pangolin being sold here as food? Yeah, yeah, as uh, squirrels, as crocodiles, as everything they are selling. Pangolin is also part of, part of the food. Have you seen it often? Yeah, all, all, all the time I come this side of Congo, mostly Western Congo. They are 
always in the market on the way you see them and uh, they sell them dead and alive yeah man it's a goddamn shame though it's such a special animal yeah so sometimes you feel like you're powerless to do any anything for them it's like uh yeah it's the entire system that doesn't work that doesn't understand what is it so it's very difficult to intervene and we do what we, we can to save those who are alive but then what can we do for the entire country yeah yeah <sighs> let's lock the door to make sure nobody comes in because this is a story I don't want to explain at all. Oh my god. Oh, you poor little thing. Oh, you poor little thing. Let's get you out of this bag. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Probably super dehydrated, yeah? No, oh, you're not looking very good. Hey, yeah, that's some water. That's some water. Yeah, how's that? <sighs> A bit out of our league, we consult the internet. <sighs> How to rehabilitate an animal. To reanimate. No, not reanimate. It's, <laughs> it's different. Reanimation will come later. Okay then. No, I don't think there's a Google result. Save a. Yeah. Uh, if you, I mean, you can try how to save a dying pangolin, but I, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna be there. Um, how do you nurse a squirrel back to health? Let's try that. Okay then. The animal will be very thin and weak. Hydrate animal with peptolite every 15 minutes for the first hour. Uh, it's. Uh, I wish I had better news for you guys. It's. He's looking in very rough shape. Um, we just went out to the pharmacy and got some syringes, like this. See, but we're not going to need the needle part. We're going to take that off and just use the base. I would expect that he's hella dehydrated, he or she, and not responding to the water I'm putting in front of the snout. So, we'll try to put some water in its mouth with the syringe and that's all we can do right now maybe get it some water and then wait yeah let's give you some water yeah is the door locked it is okay Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that good? It doesn't want to drink. Oh, there's, there's yeah, a swallow. Right, there's it. a swallow. That's a good sign. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, just a couple more swallows like that. Make us proud. What should we name him, Obed? Spike? Uh, <laughs> Spike. Yeah. Just a little uh, bit. Maybe you need some insect. Well, if he's not, if he's not um, drinking, I don't know if he'll eat. I think dehydration is the first thing. It's just like, it's like a real life cartoon, like a Pokemon or something like that. You can see the prehensile tail even has like a little soul, like a finger on it. See? Mm. All of these overlapping spines. Scales. with claws made for breaking open ant hills and termite mounds. It really is a special creature. Oh, he's so weak. Very weak. But people these are for these are for eating, right? So people aren't yeah. aren't taking the the scales and making Chinese medicine or selling them for that. It's only for eating. It's only for eating. Huh. 
He is breathing, but it um, is very, very faint. Yeah. Well, the best we can do is just put him in the shower with some water. Make it as dark as we can in there. And come back in a while. Maybe also untie him. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we can, we can, but I don't know if it's gonna do much. Look, this is the string, yeah? And they pierce this tail and put it right through the body, right through the skin. Mm. Oh, shit. Unsure exactly what to do, we discuss other options. Yeah, maybe going to a veterinary pharmacy. Is, is there a veterinary hospital here in the middle of nowhere that takes care of animals? Doesn't seem like that's something... Uh, but do, do people... Is there even a vet here? No, no definitely Exactly, not. so... What do we need to bring them to a hospital? Like, there's nothing we can do beyond this there's point. There's no even a zoo around. There's no... No, there's no zoo, there's no vet, there's no... I mean, a doctor's not going to take a pangolin. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this little eye. Keeping him warm in, is a priority. Hmm. Well, okay. So fill a Ziploc bag with hot water. We can, we can. Okay. Another, another plastic. Okay. Maybe that's better, yeah. Still breathing. Yeah. Still breathing. If they find a pangolin in the room, what's going to happen? Am I going to get in trouble? Are we going to get in trouble? Uh, you, you, you close your room. Yeah, but yeah, because it's, it's for them to difficult to understand why, how a pangolin can be in your room. Of course. So, yeah, but, so but how do I stop them from coming in the room? We've got to go do a COVID test. Um, so we're going to leave for a couple hours. Leave the poor guy in there to recuperate, hydrate, hopefully get warm, and then we'll come back and check. We return a few hours later, and I check up on Spike. We're back. I've just been laying here, trying to figure if there's anything else I can do. I have a biology degree. Zoology and marine biology. Animals. I love animals. I went to university for four years to study animals. That's how I got into travel, actually, is I wanted to start traveling the world to see all the animals that I had read about in magazines and seen in documentaries. Those are my, my celebrities, like my Johnny Depp was like a giraffe, you know what I mean? <laughs> These animal celebrities you see all the time. And then it changed a little bit, but I still really enjoy animals. I really, really do. We've been gone for a few hours now uh, to get a COVID test for our flight tomorrow. Came back and while he is breathing more deeply than before, and I think more frequently than before, I offered him some more water and it seems like he is physically weaker. I say he, because I named him Spike. <laughs> Could be a girl. I don't know how to sex a pangolin. If you do, let me know. But at this point, I feel like it's a coin flip. He's a nocturnal animal as well. We are diurnal animals. We are awake during the day. He's awake during the night. Um, so maybe things will change, but I don't think it's the sun keeping him like that. I think it's a week or two in a in plastic bag with no water or food with a hole in your tail. So all we can do is try to keep him warm, try to keep him hydrated, I guess, and uh, cross our fingers. Little Spike, 
didn't live through the night. I almost didn't post this video, but I thought it could be a good opportunity to ask you a question. Was what I did right or was it wrong? By buying the pangolin and trying to save it, am I just encouraging the hunter to go find more and bring them to the market? Or by trying to save it, was it actually helping? I don't know the answer. As a biologist, it was really hard for me to leave this amazing creature just to die in a bag at a market. And as a human, it's easier for me to point fingers and say, how could you do this? How could you do that? But as a traveler, you realize the world's not so black and white. And in the case here, these people just need to eat. And many can't afford the prime cuts of luxury meats that we have, like prime rib and chicken breasts. It's not on the menu. It's too much money. They eat what they've been eating for thousands of years. They eat what they find in the forest. This video, this experience was the last one I had in Congo before I left and it made me have mixed feelings. I'd love to know what you think about it. Was it the right choice or the wrong choice? Could I have made a better choice? I don't exactly know. Let me know in the comments. And also, I want to say thank you guys for keeping big, wide, open minds with this series because no doubt it's one of the wildest I've done on Fearless and Far. Thank you for watching, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. The channel's almost at one million. That's kind of amazing. I've got big stuff planned. I can't wait to show you. Catch you next time.